Why hello there, please come in, come in. I'm just laying out some type for some invitations going out later this week. It seems Mrs. Robinson is having some sort of party. We finished our papers earlier this morning, so I have some free time. So please come on over, I'll show you what I'm working on. Welcome to my humble little shop. I have to say I have one of the most important jobs out here. My main job is to print the newspaper, and that's the best way for people to get the news today. I know big things are happening in Washington, D.C., but here in Tennessee, we're just getting our start. The Rowstones have a good paper with the Knoxville Gazette. I actually apprenticed under old George Rowstone himself. I hear he's recently passed away and his wife Elizabeth is now running that press. Good on her. Now, we're not as big as their operation, but here's our latest edition of our newspaper that we just printed out. Well, actually, we finished it last night. It takes about eight to 10 hours for these to dry. It actually took 16 hours to lay out all this type. I know that sounds like a long time, but let me actually show you why that is. Laying out type is one of the longer portions of the printing process. As you can see here, each individual letter is its own piece of type. We keep our capital letters up here in the uppercase and our smaller ones here in the lowercase. We have to combine all of these letters to make the words that we want to say. What's even more important though is how the type is laid out. Can you see what's different about this? It's not that easy to read, is it? That's because all of this type is laid out backwards and upside down. That's how all type is placed because when we go to print this, we are printing a mirrored version of what we lay out here. So the type will look like this, and our paper will look like this. Once all the type is set, though, now the fun part begins. We move this over to our printing press. Once we have the type laid out, we're ready to load in our paper. I've heard some people make use of trees, but we like to use good old rag paper. Why use trees to make your paper when you can use good old cloth scraps for something better? But don't get me started on that. I could talk for hours on that sometimes. The important part though is that you remember to put your paper in the press. Step one, paper. Step two, ink. If we don't ink our type, nothing would stick to the paper. After all, this is just one giant stamp. So we use these. Ink daubers. So we take our ink daubers here, place them in the ink, and we're gonna start spreading them around a little bit. And if you listen close, you can hear that sound it's making. Once we have that sound, we know that we're ready to put the ink onto the type. So we wanna beat it like so, and get it nice and covered. But we don't want to cover it too much or else it'll be hard to read. And if we put too little ink, it won't show when you press, and it'll also be hard to read. But once we're done with that, it's time to press. So our next step, we have our paper up here in the frisket. We wanna close the type pan of that down. We wanna roll this whole coffin underneath our press. Pull the devil's tail. Roll the coffin back out. And voila, we have our printed invitation. Now just remember that this needs to dry and we have our finished product. Oh, why hello Mr. Sellers. Come on in, I'll be with you in just a moment, sir. Well, this has been great fun getting to show you a little peek of our operation here, but as you can see, I have another customer to attend to. So if you excuse me, please feel free to come back anytime you'd like. I still have so much more that I would like to teach you.